Welcome to our study on what will happen after nuclear war. Now that's an ugly set of words right there, but many countries have nuclear weapons and soon a nuclear war will begin. You can almost count on it. People are striving to build more and more nuclear weapons. Rogue nations are saying they will detonate. Big nations are threatening to nuke the United States of America. So it is just a matter of time before there is nuclear war. Now, um, we'll see it begin probably in our lifetimes. In fact, almost certainly in our lifetimes, depending upon how old you are. Now, God knew that this would happen, and he has plans for what happens next. God's plan is to rule planet Earth and to bring about never-ending peace. In Isaiah 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, what government? What, are we, what government are we talking about? The government of planet Earth, the whole planet governed out of Jerusalem is the capital city of the world, not just of a great nation. And, it's, and the government will, be on, government will be on his shoulders. Who are we talking about? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In verse 7 of Isaiah 9, of the increase of his government, it's just going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger, and peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So after we have nuclear war, God plans to step in, set Jesus up as the ruler of planet Earth, bring about peace forever. Never any peace, never any more war. So God will send this great ruler, Jesus Christ, to force human beings into permanent peace. You might say, well, well that's, you're going to start a war just forcing people into peace. Well, there will be a war, the Battle of Armageddon, and that will pretty much force people into peace, not to mention the fact that spirit beings have powers beyond human beings, and they will be applying them. Revelation 19, verse 15. Now, out of his mouth goes a sharp sword with which he will strike the nations. Jesus coming back. He's going to take the nations on full force. He's going to strike the nations and bring them into submission. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. This is still Revelation 19, verse 15. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So God is angry at the way things are being done here on planet Earth. The Battle of Armageddon is the starting point for world peace. Revelation 19 verse 11. Now I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Revelation 19 verse 14. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now much as this sounds a little amazing to believe, why, why should Jesus come in a spaceship when he doesn't need a spaceship? He doesn't need a horse, but it's a little more impressive riding on a horse down from the heavens and down through the clouds than it would be just floating down as a, as a, as a body, right? as a, you know, appearing to be a man. Right? So anyhow, they'll come on white horses with a great army on white horses. So what we're going to have is war followed by peace. And most people that you talk to are expecting World War III, and they're expecting nuclear war, and they're expecting Armageddon. They're expecting lots of calamitous events coming up because we have vast nations with great military powers who disagree violently with each other. Now in Isaiah 2 verse 4, he shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people and, beat, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. Swords, just a reference to for thousands and thousands of years, swords have been one of the major army weaponry for waging war, and they will beat their swords or metal objects, metal armaments into plowshares. What are plowshares for? For plowing, for preparing to sow and harvest 
food for people to eat so we won't have starving people. We've got all this modern technology and we've got starving people around the world. And their spears, they'll be, their spears will be beaten into pruning hooks. And nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall, they, neither shall they learn war anymore. There'll be no more academies for learning war. No one will be allowed to go to war. Nobody will be allowed to make weapons of war. Weapons of war that are still lying around in junk piles will be, the metal will be used and people will be making fantastic um, farming equipment. Now, now is the time to choose who we will fight with in the Battle of Armageddon. Yes, because it's out ahead of us and Jesus will be on one side of the Battle of Armageddon. The beast power and his armies will be on the other side because we see that in the last and the sixth bowl, the bowl of God's wrath. He dries up the river Euphrates. That's to allow the northern armies, the ten kings with the beast, with the nor northern armies to come down quickly across the river Euphrates. You can, you can cross the river Euphrates very quickly with armaments if it's dry, if it's a dry river belt, right? Because most of the modern equipment it can easily drive down into a dry river bed and up the other side and get on their way. If it's full of water, most of the equipment we have, you know, in military armaments is, is not suited for driving underwater. It's not built like a submarine. And so they would have to single file or double file them across bridges like a little bit, a little bit, it would take a long time to get a large army and all their equipment south of the river Euphrates. So he's planning to do that. We need to be choosing now in this lifetime, in this time just immediately ahead of us, who we will fight with in the battle of Armageddon. Will we choose now to fight alongside of Jesus or will we, by not choosing, Jesus, right? It's most people, most people don't go, oh, okay, you're giving me a choice. Let's see. I could choose to fight with Jesus or alongside of Jesus against the armies of the beast power, or I could choose to fight with the beast power against Jesus and his armies on the white horses. It's not as simple as that. Most people, if they don't make the serious choice to learn Jesus, now, when there's time to study and focus and look at it in, in serious study, then they will, by accident, end up, because there'll be great miracles showing that the beast power is a God figure, and most people would just say, well, if he's doing great miracles, he must be God, right? And we'll just do what God says to do, and then it'll come as a huge surprise, because the, the, just before Jesus appears in the sky with his armies, they'll be saying, who can make war with the beast? Because the beast is the all-powerful, world-ruling military government. Here we were at ruling out of Jerusalem too. So <clears throat> some of the time and, and, and some of the time from another, another city. Okay, so we choose now by seriously learning about Jesus and his ways. In 2 Timothy 2 verse 3, it says, You, <clears throat> you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So there's a reference in the scriptures talking to Timothy. Paul says, you must endure hardship. And, and Christians have faced hardship throughout history. And, you know, but on the other side is a fabulous, fabulous blessing and reward. So you must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. In verse 4 says, to please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So Jesus is in the business. This was written 2,000 years ago, but it's true today. In the last 2,000 years, Jesus has been saying, I am enlisting soldiers into my army, and you'll be preparing to fight with Jesus because just before Jesus lands on planet Earth, he resurrects all the dead saints from the last 2,000 years. And then Paul tells us that after the resurrected dead saints rise and be given eternal life, angel bodies, spirit being bodies, then those who are living Christians will follow them, rise up after them, and they too will be given spirit being bodies and they have angelic bodies. It looks like they're going to be given a white horse too <laughs> in order to complete the picture. So what must we do to prepare? Okay, 
That's the question we're going to face now, and that is, how shall we prepare for nuclear war, what happens after nuclear war, and then for the Battle of Armageddon, which is the great last war before the great peace begins and never ends, and there's never any, any more war after that. So the best preparation is to learn daily, and the reason I say daily, because if you're going to the Olympics, you would want to practice, you would want to exercise, you would learn, you want to learn your discipline daily, because each day you want to get a little better, each day you want to get a little better. And with most, with most uh, your programs that, that we try to do, if we let it go for a day, then it's easy to let it go for another day. And if we let it go for two days, it's much easier to let it go for three days. And sometimes we can find ourselves three weeks later and we've forgotten to do our weightlifting. I, I personally like to do a little weight resistance. This is, uh, this is my 10 pound weight. I brought that along so I wouldn't, I wouldn't drop it on my toe and hurt myself too badly. But we so easily let our programs slip that's why I say daily, the best preparation is to learn daily to trust the Jesus words. And a lot of people trust, they, they hear Bible, they even watch a teacher as he's preaching from the Bible, they even turn in their Bibles and he says, turn here and read this and turn here and read this. But he has prepared his message in such a way that you are going to just see the words you're going to hear his explanations of those words, which sometimes is contrary to what Jesus teaches, because in John 3.13, Jesus very clearly says, No man, no human being that's lived on the planet, no man has ascended in the heaven. Now, that was written down in 95 AD. If in 95 AD, no human being, people had been Christians, people had died, Christians had died, no Christians from 33 AD or 31 AD, through to 95 AD, none of those, so says Jesus, if you want to believe Jesus, then that's very good, because you should, right? No one has ascended into heaven, he said, written down in 95 AD. So basically, if you read your scriptures, people don't ascend into heaven, which is contrary to what most Bible teachers teach. It's up to you to study it and prove it for yourself, but it's very clear and very simple to find. So how should we prepare? Learn daily to trust the words of Jesus, Matthew and Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, Jesus speaking, what, whatever things you ask when you pray, now Jesus giving us the inside scoop on how we should be praying, whatever you ask, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Wow, that's a powerful thing. But again, if you study all the words of Jesus and you begin trusting them, Jesus will help us to learn to have faith in him if we trust in him and his words. Paul explains it in Romans 5.1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. So we can begin our peace this side of these nuclear wars and of, of the battles, the battle of Armageddon and so on. We can have our peace starting now, right? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.2. Through whom, Jesus, we also have access by faith, so we faith, trust in his words, trust in what he teaches, not what people say he teaches, which is sometimes the opposite of what he actually says. Access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, because in 1 Corinthians 15 we're told we're going to receive spirit being bodies, angelic bodies, and we'll be you know, ready to ride the white horses with Jesus when he comes down to take over the world. Now, Jesus says believers can escape all the horrors of nuclear war. Wow, there's a fabulous blessing and, and offer. Luke 21, 36, Jesus speaking says, Watch therefore, take heed to yourself, in other words, and pray always that you may be counted worthy, not necessarily worthy, but you're striving to be blameless, you're striving to be counted worthy by God to escape all these things that will come to pass. This is after the Olivet Prophecy and showing all the terrible things that are going to happen and will come to pass and will stand before the Son of Man, before Jesus. So how do we start this process? We simply follow His instructions. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, says Jesus, 
and you will find rest to your souls. Now, during the Battle of Armageddon, after a nuclear war, and on into all eternity. So we need daily to read his words and obey his words. Because Jesus says in Luke 6, 46, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? It makes no sense if you're going to say, Lord, you're Jesus, you're my Lord, and then you do the opposite of what the Lord says. Jesus says, just don't bother. Don't bother to call me Lord, Lord, if you will not obey what I teach. So doing his words will prepare us for nuclear war and eternal peace.